Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in today's video, I am going to be talking about my most controversial hot takes that I have done on my two and a half years-ish of being here on YouTube. And I thought I would reflect on whether I have changed my mind on some of the opinions that I've had in the past, because these are the most controversial ones, the things that you guys have pointed out and said that you disagree with. And I thought I would take a second look and see if I still agree with myself or whether I still stand by them. This is a real fun, a uh, trip down memory lane, a little like making content about content, which is such a popular thing to do here on YouTube, right? A, a real nesting doll worth of content. So I'm really excited to dive in. Let's go take a look at all of my controversial hot takes and see what I have to think about them now. Okay, first up I have, let's talk about ceiling fans. Let's talk about a video that I did ages ago. I'm gonna link to all these videos by the way, but um, they, this was a uh, interior design. What was this one? It was um, things that make your home look dated. That's right. And in one of them, I. I said dated ceiling fans were uh, a problem and things that were really dating your home. So the, I was specifically looking at the ones that have like the floral glass shades and the really sort of brown, veneered, probably peeling, gross ones that just were honestly like everywhere in the 80s that are still hanging around. And I was saying that those things are still there and they should probably maybe be swapped out. Every suburban woman from Texas came after me and thought that I was trying to take away all ceiling fans. And as I've had some distance from that video and that controversy, this is like the extent of controversy that exists on my channel, which I'm okay with because I don't need any more drama in my life. But anyway, with this one, yeah, do I agree or disagree with what I thought in the past? You know what? Here's the thing. I think I was misunderstood. I want to clarify now. I was set the record straight. I'm not saying that all ceiling fans are bad. I do think that it takes, it's worth a minute to, to take a, a sober second thought on whether you need a ceiling fan in the room. If you're from Houston and I'm living in Vancouver, I get that you might need a ceiling fan while I do not because, you know, we only get like maybe three months of really hot weather. You guys might get a whole lot more. So I get the need for a ceiling fan. So first of all, I think, yes, taking a second thought on whether you actually need one is decent advice. And I will also stand by what I said before, that the dated ceiling fans are the real culprits. This is the one for me that I personally just, yeah, think that makes your space looks really dated. But there are some really great ceiling fans out there that are much more modern, much more sleek, much more elegant. There's ways that you can do ceiling fans that feel very current, uh, that will fit into your design style in a way that really elevates it and makes it look really beautiful and also functional. So again, if you don't live where I live in a much cooler climate, I get that you might want a ceiling fan, but they're not that really brown, ugly ceiling fan that we've seen so many times with the really gross sort of flowery uh, shape. Those ones I still think need to go. So for this one, I'm gonna say I stand by my advice as controversial as it might be. But again, I'm not saying it to take away all of your ceiling fans. I'm just saying, you, calm down, Texas. <laughs> I'm just saying maybe give them an update. That's all I'm saying, consider it. And maybe get rid of them. But if you can't get rid of them, at least update them. Okay, next up, we are going to talk about my hot takes on Farmhouse that I have done over the years. So I haven't actually picked on Farmhouse in a long time. Everything that's needed to be said about Farmhouse and the cheesy signs and like the, the eat sign over the kitchen, right? The the inspirational quotes, all the things, the, the farm pitchforks just sort of casually sitting in the corner, like, you know, the, the shiplap for days. I mean, all that, everything that has needed to be said about Farmhouse, I feel like has already been said. So I haven't really touched on it a whole lot in the last say year or so. So will I stand by the stuff that I have said in the past about it? Because there has been controversy. There has been a lot of people that have said things about <laughs> me and my take on Farmhouse. Yeah, you know what? I stand by it. I stand by everything that I said. I actually did a video on fixing Farmhouse, which was sort of a little bit of my mea culpa to the Farmhouse people to go like, I'm not saying your style is bad. I'm saying it is a really accessible style. It works great for families. It's a really cool style if done really correctly correctly. It's comforting for people and I get that and it's really accessible and I think that a lot of people love it and I don't want to take that away from them. I do think though that there are some better parts about farmhouse design than others and that's why I did that sort of follow-up video. So even though there has been videos that exist here on YouTube that um, basically say everything that I have said about farmhouse and others have said in everything but name where they've pretty much not named 
offend me, but uh, clearly are offended by my take on Farmhouse. I can understand why my hot take on Farmhouse is tacky and gaudy. Might rub some people the wrong way. I, I have enough self-awareness to know that that's true, but know that it comes from a place of love and that it's about trying to find a less cheesy, more authentic style that fits you and not just uh, what you necessarily see at a dollar store. And that was really what I was trying to do in that Fixing Farmhouse video. And that's really why I have criticized Farmhouse so much in the past. So do I regret what I've said about Farmhouse? No, I do not. I believe everything that I said on Farmhouse is accurate and I stand by it 110%. But even the Farmhouse haters, we need to move past it because I feel like we've said everything there is to say. It's not a good style. It, I would say Farmhouse, by the way, hasn't gone away. I, I, my thing is, I think honestly, there's traces of Farmhouse in like organic modern, for example. I mean, it's, you know, a little bit more of a traditional style, the, the classic or the modern farmhouse, but then some of the contemporary that we're seeing now with organic modern, but there's some traces of sort of rustic elements being used in design even today. And I would even say you take like the Joanna Gaines, like the classic Joanna Gaines farmhouse style that every suburban wine mom wanted. I feel like that's now moved into something more like the Studio McGee style. So Studio McGee has traces of farmhouse in there as well. I mean, depends on how strict you kind of want to define it. So I do think that it has changed and evolved probably for the better because I think it is a little bit toned down on the cheesiness, which people like myself have pointed out ad nauseum and sort of embrace something that's a little bit more timeless and, uh, and hopefully it, it allows people to maybe express themselves a little bit more than classic you know, more modern farmhouse while well, everything just looked a bit save me, save me. So I stand by everything I said. Okay, next up, let's talk about one that was a lot more recent, which was the biggest interior design mistake video that I did. So in that video, I said that the biggest mistake that people don't make is that they don't put their stuff away, that they choose things like open media consoles and open shelving, open, 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 and all of their, you know, PlayStation controllers and, and, and TV remotes and books and magazines and everything that they just sort of have sitting around their apartment or their house uh, tend to be on display and it can make a place feel cluttered even when it's not actually cluttered. So I was advocating for storing a lot of that stuff or putting it behind closed doors. And one of the biggest controversies I would say that came from that video that I noticed was people pointing out that if you have um, ADHD or any sort of um, other issues in terms of forgetting things that you put away, that it was really a challenge for people to take my tip and really run with it. I would say that they're probably right. I would say this, this a little bit is filed under, you know, not everything I say or anything you see on the internet, like tips and stuff are necessarily going to apply you. And so it's always really important, I think for everybody to take into account their own personal circumstances before sort of taking all of these tips and stuff on board and make sure that it's gonna work for you and your household. But I would still say that you guys all the time are in the comment section telling me and, and, and sharing your own personal experience and I get to learn from that. A lot of things that I end up putting in my videos come from you guys, like things like, you know, if your furniture is too low, how difficult it can be if you have mobility issues, uh, maybe you're a little bit older where like your knees aren't so great and it can be really difficult sometimes to get in and out of these really low sofas. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily have even thought of that and that came from you guys. So I think that um, overall this one, yeah, I would say I would probably have wished I could put that in there, but I honestly didn't even think of it because it's just not something that really applies to me. And I think it's really cool that I was able to learn something from you guys on that one because it is important. I try my best all the time to, you know, imagine lots of different people's experiences and how, because I think that's a, such a really important part of design is taking into account, you know, that we're not all the same and that we all like different things and we're all capable of different things. We have different, we're, we're all unique, right? And I want to make sure that I create tips for you guys that incorporate in how, you know, it can impact lots of different types of people in different circumstances. So I try my best, but I learned on that one, I think, and um, definitely something that I will think of more going forward. But yeah, I would say, it was a controversial take and for good reason, because I think people just pointed out a different way of how people's minds work. And that was really interesting for me. So, um Thank you for that. Okay, next up, I would say was another controversial hot take I had was hanging curtains. So I talked about this a lot on like TikTok. How many views does this have? I swear these these both went viral on Instagram and TikTok. It has 4.6 million views on Instagram and 2.7 million views 
on TikTok. So that's like, whoa, that is like seven plus million people that saw me talk about curtain length. <clears throat> okay, I was saying that curtains should be placed quite high up above the uh, window in order to be able to stick closer to the ceiling height. That was kind of one of my tips and I thought that it should go full length and I gave a couple of options in terms of it sort of kissing the floor, uh, the curtain sort of kissing the floor or puddling is even an option, which a lot of people didn't like. That was another controversial thing. But a lot of people pointed out that there are loads of different types of windows out there and and how do I reconcile a tip with all the different sorts of windows that exist? So it's very controversial. It got a lot of comments. People calling me all sorts of things because a lot of people were saying things like, well, what do I do if I have a radiator underneath or I have some sort of heating element or a heat source or something under the, the curtains? Okay, so listen, this would, I personally would file this under not everything on the internet exists specifically for you. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to take these tips and apply it to your own circumstances. So to be clear, I do not think that you should light your house on fire by putting your curtains near a heat source and have them go up in flames. That's not what I would advocate for you. I would say you're gonna have to use your best judgment and not have things catch on fire. So I see the point. This, by the way, this is the problem sometimes with short form video is that everybody's just like trying to get their points out in eight seconds because that's like literally the attention span that you get for people. And it's hard to do that when you're dealing with every type of window that could possibly make sense in a person's home. So that's sometimes a struggle. I still stand by my advice. I don't think it's like window treatments to apply for every single type of window that possibly exists. But I do think it's worth pointing out if I need to that not every piece of content that exists on the internet is necessarily going to work for you. And you're sort of gonna have to make it your own, right? It's a little bit like, you know, when you watch a, a YouTube video on cooking or if you're looking at a recipe on like, I don't know, Epicurious or, or Bon Appetit or something. And someone's like, I'm making macaroni and cheese, but instead of cheddar cheese, can I put in Monterey Jack? And you're like, no, like obviously what the like macaroni and cheese is going to explode. Like use your best judgment. If you don't like cheddar and you want to use Monterey Jack, then like make it your own, you know? Like there's a certain degree where the responsibility in this communication two-way street needs to sort of sit with the viewer to make their own best judgment in terms of how to move forward. So with my curtain example, stand by the advice, don't light your house on fire. That's basically my point. Next up is I hate pink. And that's controversial because a lot of people love pink and they don't like it when I make fun of it. Listen, I have been very consistent on my dislike of pink. You will never see it at my house. And um, that's all I'm really gonna say about that. Okay, and then next on my list, this is actually a super recent one because I just did a YouTube shorts the other day about it. And that is too many plants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so nothing is more controversial, I swear, than plants. Whether you're talking real versus fake, that was controversial because I think I said before that like I get why people would choose fake plants and some people are like, never, plants must always be real, right? You always have those people. But this was the too many plants controversy that happened yesterday. <laughs> and that was me saying that sometimes when you have too many plants, it can make your place feel a little bit like a jungle and to me, it feels like it's just a little bit heavy and it detracts from the experience of being in the rest of the space. I think houses should be built for humans and not necessarily for the plants that live in them too. This was very controversial because a lot of you really, 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 really love plants. And listen, here's the thing. I can make fun of farmhouse all day long. And like, let's be honest, like people that really love farmhouse, like they don't really watch my channel. So, I can pretty much say what I want and it's kind of a little bit preaching to the choir when I'm going to you guys, but the plants, the plants, I mean, that's, that's me really taking a gamble because it's the millennial women and the plant gays are the two demographic, that's like my target demo. Like those two groups make up like 85% of my channel. So I need to be very careful when I really annoy the plants people because those people are very, very vocal and they love their plants and I get it. I love plants too. I just, I, you know what? I'm gonna stand by my advice. I'm just gonna say, this is a, if you love it, you do it, which is generally kind of my ethos around most things when it comes to interior design. No one, I don't, I don't go to your house. Like I don't know where you live. So I'm probably not gonna go there. So so if you love it, go for it. You put it in your house, I don't care. I'm just saying, in my opinion, sometimes the plants, they're a bit heavy. And sometimes I think they're a little overdone. And sometimes you can maybe just take a couple away. You know, just uh, stop adding more. Maybe just consider both of those things is all I'm saying. So I stand by my advice, controversial as it might be, that was like 
like the ceiling fan firestorm that I created. Yeah, I'm still gonna, I'm gonna be hearing about this one I think for years. So I'm just gonna try to get ahead of this one and set the record straight, love plants, not too much. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, and then my next one. This was actually someone, there's another YouTuber, his name is Joel Wood. Hi Joel, if you're watching, because you apparently do watch my channel, hello. Joel is British, and Joel one time did a stitch with me, or whatever it's called, in it. I don't know what it is. Is it a stitch, is it a duet? I have no idea. Anyway, it's basically I said that North Americans, this is the, 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 the carpet in the bedroom controversy that I created. What did I say? I just wanna be clear because the words matter. That North Americans typically, we don't see as much carpet in the bedroom as I know British and places people in other countries do. And Joel took that as Americans, Canadians, whatever, do not have any carpet in the bedroom. And people tore me to shreds by being like, yes, Absolutely, Americans have carpets in the bedroom. And I just wanted to clarify because I think this was a really, this was a hot take. You know, the more opinions you give on the internet, the more you just feel like you need to defend yourself, which isn't obviously a good use of my time, but here we are. Okay, yes, I know that North Americans, for the record, I know we have carpet in the bedroom. I know that. What I was saying is, is the trend, the trend is not to put carpets in the bedroom. That is something that's been going on for a good decade or so. We haven't seen a ton of, it happens, of course it does, but it's less in like design world, in high-end builds and whatever, we've sort of moved away from putting carpets in a bedroom and moved more towards just bringing in hardwood, engineered hardwood, vinyl plank, whatever is kind of in the rest of the home. That is not true in other countries. In other countries, it's still very, very common and very popular to put carpets in bedrooms. It's not something that is seen, you know, carpets just have a really bad reputation, I feel like, in North America right now and have done for quite a while, while that isn't necessarily shared in other parts of the world. So, you know, do I stand by my advice? I feel like it was misunderstood. I feel like people thought that I was like, there's no way. It led to like, literally, I can't even tell you how many of these little duet stitches things of people saying I'm an idiot while sitting on their carpets in their bedroom. I know it exists. We're talking trends, people, and we're not just talking about everything. You know, if your house is from the 1980s, then yeah, you probably have carpet in the bedroom. We're talking the trend, what we're seeing going forward in new builds. So I just got to set the record straight there on that one. Okay, and then finally, the criticism that I received from me making fun of inflatable Christmas decor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. This campaign probably started by my sister, who of course loves, an, she's never met an inflatable Olaf for Christmas that she didn't like, because uh, she insists on putting it out every year. The main criticism that I get on this one, which is still funny, is just that, you know, let kids have fun if they love inflatable decor at Christmas time. If people love their cheesy Christmas crap, then let them have it. Why, why Nick, do you have to make fun of these things? To which I say, because I've made a living off of it on the internet, so. <laughs> Actually, I know where my bread is buttered and like it's not exactly something that to me It's like something that I can make content out of so of course I'm gonna make fun of you for it Yes, if your kids love inflatable decor then you put it up. Yes, I'm going to make fun of it Yes, it doesn't matter what I think Yes, you can keep it and have a good time and and, and have a wonderful holiday season with all of your inflatable Santas and um, That's really not my problem But um, just know that people like me are just going to continue to make fun of it on the internet because that's what we do because it's fun for us and that's why we do it. And you like to watch it because we all like to chuckle together. And no one's taking any of this too seriously. And that's really kind of the point of why I wanna make this video is just like, there's so many things that we talk about and we share and we joke and we laugh here and, um, you know, it's all harmless. And I just want everybody to kind of know that. Some people don't always get the joke. That's okay, because um, I'm still just gonna have fun. And I know that most of you, 99.99% .99 of you get it. And um, yeah, so inflatable decor. Keep it if you love it. Don't if you care what I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. This was, as I said, just a super fun one, really light, and let's just take a look at all the things I've said. I agree with most of my takes, I think, that I've said in the past. I stand by most of them. Sometimes maybe I was a bit misunderstood. That's okay. I wanted to set the record straight. I'll see you all in the next video, where I'll probably have more controversial hot takes for you. Bye.